So we're going to be talking about the Kansas City Three. What that it's that's what it's being called right now is the Kansas City Three. Um, the three men who unfortunately lost their lives, um, still to be determined on the cause of death, um, in a backyard in Kansas City after, you know, kicking back and watching a game with their friends. Um, it is Ricky Johnson, who was 38, David Harrington, 37, Clayton McGinney, who was 36, um, and they were found this past January 9th. And it's been a big mystery. We got reached out to from somebody who lived local in the area who wanted us to look into it. Uh, we covered it a couple times in breaking, you know, true crime, breaking news. Um, and now I decided I want to dedicate a, a case to it so that we can dig a little bit deeper because we have more information now. Um, but I want to say it's not official. Um, so the toxicology, uh, came out in the past couple of days and, um, it was, it's just preliminary results and we don't even have official documentation on it. It apparently was given to a family member and then that family member reached out to media and then another family member from a separate family reached out and confirmed it. So there's basically every family supposedly was given it and they were reaching out and offering the information to the public. Um, but the supposed results are that they found cocaine, THC and fentanyl in their bloodstreams. Um, and I think there's some discourse we should have around this, but first to go back, back into the case and give a refresher and talk about what actually happened here that we know so far is that the, these men, okay. Uh, Harrington, Johnson and McGinney went to go visit, um, their friend on supposedly January 7th, which there's kind of contradicting evidence here where it, it may have not just been the seventh, but their friend is, um, what is his name again? Something Willis. Is his name? The, he's 38. He's a scientist. Is it Jeremy Willis? I, I don't remember. I'm trying I to can, remember. I can look it up. They call him the chemist. Yeah, he's been dubbed the chemist because of an interview done by a cousin of one of the victims. Um, and they I say that's what his uh, nickname was in high school. Yeah, I know. I, I'm going to bring that up. Oh, okay. Just give me his name. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so so we'll go into that. But January 7th, apparently all three of these guys, plus another Jordan Willis, Jordan Willis. There you go. Apparently, they all, plus another guy, went over to watch the Chiefs and Chargers game. Now, there is an interview with a neighbor who said he saw these vehicles arrive and were there all weekend. And this guy went hunting on Sunday, meaning there wasn't, it didn't seem there would be a way for him to have seen them arrive that Sunday if he wasn't home that Sunday. So that makes mm. me think they were there from Saturday, maybe even Friday, like literally there all weekend. Okay. Cause that's contradictory Yeah, that they didn't come there that day. If he wasn't even there that day, he saw them come earlier in the weekend. So like Saturday or something, or he's mistaken. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I just know that the he more said, we look into no, he cases said it, in general, the, more cracks we see in eyewitness accounts. That's all I'm saying. He said that he had just moved in. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know much about Jordan Willis, mm -hmm. but that everything was quiet until that weekend and that they were there all weekend. Yep. I got you. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I eyewitnesses are just, it's a flip of a coin. You okay. Know? Yeah, I guess. Um, but it's interesting, um, yeah. to say the least. Um, but anyway, what's, what's more interesting is if that statement is even true at all, wouldn't their family members know? Wouldn't that have already come out? I don't know. Like a fiance. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, she didn't even come till Tuesday I, to look for him. I get it. So um, anyway, they watch the game. And then January 8th, um, the next day is apparently Jordan Willis um, sleeps. Okay. He goes to bed that night and thinks that his friends left. Now his story has changed multiple times. So I don't know what his official narrative is, but I heard he claimed that he fell asleep on the couch and he thought he saw them leave through the front door. And that's his last memory. The next day he wakes up, he works on his computer for a while. Now in a previous breaking news update, I said that he had left a few times. Apparently that's not true. I got that impression because he said he was working. He works from home apparently. So he didn't leave. He worked on the computer and he slept and worked on the computer the next day and he slept. Um, but he didn't notice anything at all. Sure. And then January 9th, um, later, I, I'm thinking in the afternoon, uh, the fiance of McGinney is looking for him and she comes by and she apparently breaks into his basement, like breaks out a window and goes upstairs. I mean, if you can't and, get a hold of him and, he, and then he, knew he was there. Well, I believe she knocked and nobody would answer. She breaks in and then she ends up finding him in the backyard on the porch in like a lounging chair outside and he is passed away and frozen and um she calls the police the police come and they find the other two out in the yard um and they're all passed away and it's a mystery because the cops couldn't identify a cause of death other than these men are frozen and passed away um so immediately a Jordan Willis is handcuffed. There is video from a neighbor that shows him being detained, but then he is released. Um, and now he has, he's made a ton of statements through his attorney. A no. lot of them don't look so great. Um, the fact he went to rehab doesn't look great. Right. He checked himself into rehab now and said that one of his family members said, that this was a wake up call for him and he checked himself into rehab. And, um, there has been an interview from one of the, cause apparently all these guys knew each other from younger days, like school days, like from being school age children, they've known each other all this time. Yep. And that Jordan Willis, the man who rented this property and lived there, um, he had the nickname, the chemist, because he was known for making cock drug cocktails for people to like cheer them up. Or when they were dealing with something, he would make a drug cocktail for them to make them feel better. Um, and that cousin even like goes on to allege that he was experimenting on them like Guinea pigs, which I think is taking it a bit of a it's a bit of a stretch i don't Big know about time, that unless they found a chemistry room and or set or you know what i mean yeah he's an hiv like research scientist yeah, he, he manages data yeah. yeah like he's not he's he's literally working from home on a computer yeah he's not doing <laughs> chemistry no he's not doing chemistry right. the nickname literally just comes from when they were younger but um so the police have said that they are investigating, but there is no foul play. And this is not a homicide investigation. They are not, this is not a murder case. They're not investigating it like that. I've seen a ton of ex law enforcement on news saying that's a red flag and weird. Why wouldn't you? It changes the way you're looking at the case, but then others say, well, it's not so weird, but they better be investigating it. Yeah. Um, which they are, they are, even if they say, you know, that it's, there's no foul play. That doesn't mean if they find a cause of death that could implicate somebody in having some kind of liability um, that they won't make an arrest because they very well still could. It just may not be homicide. They're doing the right thing here, you guys. The right thing. If and they're the, getting so much flack for it. If there is not evidence of foul play, then you don't act like there is. I know. So obvious. You investigate, like, it's 
it's the this or that behavior and belief system that like, oh, if they're not investigating like it's a homicide, then they're just not doing anything. They're not investigating anything. That's it's like they're true. doing everything or nothing. And exactly, it's not true because they're not intentionally investigating through the steps of a known homicide crime scene does not mean they're not investigating it. And if they find evidence of a homicide, they will absolutely change tactics. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They're they doing will. the right thing. They will. And, you know, during the time before we found out, um, I, I mean, this whole time, basically, since this, everybody has been speculating drugs. And I did feel like it had something to do with drugs, too. And when I knew what they were doing, OK, I heard from family members that some of them messed around with drugs, but none of them were addicts. Um, and, you know, that they like to party and uh, the whole chemist thing. I immediately thought, well, they're all drinking. OK, and it's a party. And they're, they're hanging out and drinking. And for this to happen, I, I don't believe they were acquiring fentanyl. What, what I think the most likely scenario is, is if you don't know this, cocaine is complementary to alcohol for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people that I have met in the past have for whatever reason, those are two th drugs that a lot of people like, and they go they go together well. The effects go together well for a lot of people. It's a super, super common thing to do um, for people who like that kind of thing is, you know, drinking and get a little bit of Coke. It's like, it's it's classic partying, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know how else to put it, but we have a major issue with fentanyl right now being in everything, like everything. Um, and cocaine is one of the most common things to be laced with fentanyl. Uh, and I, I, I've heard a lot of people talking on it and I like not quite understanding what it's like to do something like that. The effects it has, the way someone will behave when they do drugs like this, um, but cocaine is an upper alcohol is a depressant. There was also THC in their system, which is a, a downer with a slightly psychoactive or psychedelic effect. Um, and fentanyl is a major downer. One of the strongest, it is 50% more powerful than heroin. Heroin is like 50% more than morphine. Carfentanil is like 100% more than fentanyl. Like like 10,000. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is like 10,000. I'm wrong. Uh, but if you have no tolerance, knowing... So apparently what the family member said is that... Like, there's... They said they... 10 is like the lethal... And I don't know what measurements they're using here, Okay. But 10 is like the lethal dose or whatever. And then they were at 30 at how much was in their system. Really? Yeah. They were triple times the lethal dose or something like that of fentanyl. Then they either didn't know. Uh, oh, they didn't know. They either didn't know that he, they didn't know they were getting fentanyl mixed in with their Coke, Coke or they had a tolerance and this was like more pure. I don't know. So I, I don't, I don't think they were out sinking, seeking fentanyl. I think it would make sense that especially with what we know from the chemist Willis, that either a, they went and got, cause there is cocaine in their system supposedly and THC and alcohol and fentanyl. Wait, what alcohol thc fentanyl yep. wait they didn't mention alcohol, alcohol but I, alcohol THC. is presumed okay yeah. alcohol is presumed so if all of that's in their system it makes sense with how often cocaine i i also looked into this too um now it is intentional. A lot of the lacing is intentional, but there's also some that isn't intentional because they're using a lot of these people who are producing this product. Um, 
yes, they're using it to cut drugs, fentanyl, because it's cheap and also because it gets people super addicted, but they're also using the same equipment to mix and cut. Like they'll mm. take fentanyl and break it down and cut it up or whatever. And then after they're done with that, they'll use the same tools for the cocaine. Right. Right. Yep. So it's, there's still trace amounts getting in there, but with it, it being this much of a lethal dose, it makes me think, well, did their friend make a cocktail? Because he's known for doing that. They're partying. It's an ode to good times before he makes a cocktail without realizing how potent and strong it is. And he just checked into rehab, you guys. So he had a tolerance. So did he have a tolerance? And that's why he survived. And he was inside the house on the couch, not outside. So right. did they do some, the guys go out in the back to smoke and then it kicks in and then it kicked in. They snorted it because snorting it is not as fast as like injecting it or something. It's slower. Yeah. Um, it takes a little bit more time. So it would take a few minutes to fully kick Maybe in maximum 10 minutes it just depends on what you got going on and everything uh but it, the i think the absorbency could be increased if there truly is cocaine mixed in with it um so they, and they were speedballing but uh you know the intranasal absorbency i think we looked it up it was between like 70 and 80 percent so it at three times the rate and 70 to 80 percent absorbency through intranasal um it almost makes me feel like they didn't know they were doing fentanyl it makes you wonder if it was more fentanyl than it was coke oh yeah oh yeah it had to have yeah. been that's what i'm wondering is that for whatever reason they didn't know or maybe this dude was passed out and they found his stash and thought it was coke but was actually fentanyl oh and he really didn't know and his friends found his stuff but hey let's do these three lines together you know cheers and then go out to smoke and yeah so Basically, what would happen if you just snorted that and you walked outside to smoke and say they're sitting there or messing around, it starts to kick in. I think there could be some stumbling, possibly. Like, because my question is how one's chilling in the lounger, okay? He would basically nod off peacefully to sleep. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be painful. It wouldn't be scary. He would feel super good until he's just gone and unconscious. And, you know, and then the other guys, like, I don't know how they ended up in the backyard. The only thing I can think is they're messing around, goofing around, going out back to smoke, and then it kicks in and they just pass out. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would hit, it, it would hit them like a ton of bricks oh yeah they'd be out like they would just be they out. wouldn't know they they would be alive and talking and then yep yeah they couldn't control it no. at all like nope. there's not even time to ask for help you guys with no. that much amount of fentanyl in your system and it hitting you like that you, you have no time yeah, yeah essentially they literally put a, a lit grenade inside of them um And didn't know when it was going to blow. Like, that's it. Yep. There was nothing they could have done. I I don't think at that rate and and how quick that happened, even if their friend was alive, I don't think that paramedics would have got there on time. They would have to be there in less than 12 minutes to not cause brain uh, failure and injury. Yeah. So, I... That's actually a really plausible scenario that you just mentioned there that maybe he was passing out on the couch and they found his stash and he slightly remembers them going out out of a door, like getting their jackets on and going outside and yeah. not realizing they're going out to smoke because they just found your stash and snorted it. Yeah. 
But here's my question. If that is what happened, if he is an addict, he would notice some was gone. Okay. He wouldn't not notice that his stash had been taken out of by three people because you're going to snort a lot more. Like, you know what I mean? Like it takes more when you snort something. So, and if he's an addict, there is, he absolutely knows that somebody got into a stash. Well, yeah, that's true. If he, if he was, yeah, if he was doing that, but he has a, he's a respectable job. Why would he be moving weight like that? Well, when I say, say, wait, wait, I mean like an ounce of fentanyl is a lot, like a lot, a lot because it's so potent. It's not like, wait, 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 where you're talking like. You know, uh, kilos, but I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah, if you had a lot, I guess, yeah, it would be harder to tell. You're right. Um, but what do you think about him not noticing? So, so I think I believe that he didn't notice. Um, and that is the only thing is he has, okay. I think I believe it because if you are trying to cover up like I okay, I've been in situations where people were ODing, okay? And you have like someone like me who doesn't care I'm gonna stay there and I'm gonna try to save that person and do anything I can to save that person. And then you have people who are like, I'm not getting in trouble by and run and don't care what happens to that person. Um, I think you're probably more likely to get in trouble if you do run <laughs> and they find out you were there and didn't care and didn't try to save that person than if you tried to save them yeah um but that's just me i guess uh but if he were trying to hide that why would he just leave them in the backyard that makes no sense yeah i know for I, days I get, it. I get it i i have no idea i you guys There's know no i'm not the type of person that can commit to something without like feeling like i understand it completely um but Where's I think the benefit? It's very plausible either way. I I don't know because I don't know the whole story. Um, you know, a lack of evidence isn't evidence. Uh, it it just means there isn't any yet. Um, but listen, okay. I think so. Here's the discussion I'm hearing around this: is a lot of people feel like he deserves to be charged because it's his fault because he gave them the drugs. We have zero proof of that. Yeah. One, no of, one of them could have brought drugs. Yeah. Very, very or they well. Could have could've. stole his while he was asleep. I, yeah. Could he could have anything. Yep. He could have not given them anything at all, which could be why he's not being charged because he said, look, I woke up and realized my drugs were gone and I thought they left. I never went outside. I work from home. I was on my computer. I went to bed. I was on my computer. I went to bed. Like, I'm living my normal life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And I hear like people like Nancy Grace saying, how could he answer the door in his underwear for the cops? And I'm like, what? Really? Come on, Nancy Grace. What are you even talking about? Um, What are you talking about? (laughs) I would be offended that he's even wearing any boxer shorts. (laughs) Anyway. Um, I honestly, I don't know if he deserves to be charged. Okay. If he gave them something laced intentionally. Yeah. I I think he would deserve to be charged, dude. But he gave them something laced intentionally and they didn't know. Absolutely. But come on, dude. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So there is a statue in Missouri. Okay. That if you are committing a crime a felony and somebody dies, you can be charged because you are committing a crime and that crime had a direct impact on that person's death, that their death wouldn't have happened without you committing that crime. Wow. So it is possible if they have proof that he gave that to them, he had to have given it to them. Okay, not them stole it from him, but he had to have given it to them for him to be charged. They're not saying that right now. Yeah. 
Now, could it happen? Yeah, it could happen. And I have actually seen it happen where somebody got charged because they gave drugs to somebody and that person died. I've seen it before. It does happen. It doesn't happen super often, but it does happen. Um, so I, I think it's possible that it could, but you know, I think there's also the possibility here that he didn't know he may not have given them the drugs. Who knows? Okay. It sounds like a bunch of friends partying who all chose to partake. Okay. They all chose to partake. Um, and he didn't know what ended up happening to them that night. And after partying that hard, if he partook in that kind of drinking and using uppers and downers, I could see him being down and out for a couple of days, feeling groggy, feeling hungover, not feeling too great. Um, that's pretty normal, you know, just waking up to work, going to bed, waking up to work, going to bed because you're not feeling too great because you partied super hard. Yeah. I don't think that's that weird. And then what would be the point of him looking in the backyard either? Like he doesn't feel good. Yeah. And if you look at the layout of the house, it's, it's out of the way to go look in the backyard. So I don't know. I mean, I just think that people are being a bit harsh, a bit harsh without much evidence. I, I think it's all weird. It's a super strange circumstance, but we have no proof he even gave them the drugs. There's no yeah. proof at all. It's just a waiting game. It is a waiting game. And we are we don't have the official toxicology. We don't have the official autopsy report. We literally don't have anything official. Yeah. Other than family statements um, and literally just speculation. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we should wait. We should wait for the evidence before we start going on attack mode. Um, don't you think? I mean, I, I don't need to wait for the evidence. If I start seeing something that looks shady, I'm going to call it. However, I don't see anything shady right now. I see things that could maybe be shady, but could also make sense. So yeah. I just don't see any major problems. I look for things that are factually untrue or improbable to be uh proven and i i just there's not enough information to know one way or the other right now but if we start getting that i like i said him going to uh rehab is a red flag it is a red flag it is um however he's not arrested so um you know it i i don't no, I don't know. It could be a wake up call too, because if he truly is an addict, not just parties sometimes, but is an addict, um, it could be a wake up call enough that he just lost three friends that maybe he's like, you know what? I don't want anything to do with any of this. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know these things. I need a statement. I need something. Yeah. I, I think that honestly, both scenarios right now are, are, both equally as likely without any information. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we just don't have any way to know. And I do feel kind of bad. Like if he had nothing to do with it and was literally just minding his own business, like maybe he's lazy. Maybe he is an addict and had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they just partied and then something happened outside of his control. I, I would feel bad because I don't have any proof that he did anything wrong other than maybe being an addict, you know, and being like not aware of his surroundings, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I want to know what you guys think about all of this. Um, it's, it's a weird one. Uh, it really is. It's really odd for this many men to drop dead like this after doing those kinds of drugs. Like yeah. all of them to drop dead like that. It is, it is pretty strange. Um, but you know, we're going to wait, we're going to look for the evidence. We're going to follow it where it goes. And we want you along with us for it and let us know what you think in the comments.